Everybody. Yeah, yeah. Hating Tesla. Yeah, yeah. Everybody. Hey, in Tesla, yeah. What's going on, everybody? Everyone loves the hate Tesla and the evolution of Tesla's car magic, the evolution of the body, the evolution of the process and the manufacturing. One of the most important parts is the machine that makes the machine and the process of Tesla is gorgeous. It's amazing. Vertical integration. We're talking about scaling down components. The best part is no parts at all. I mean, the magic. Let me allow AutoLine Network to explain this in detail. I mean, they've broken up this car, so they're worth a share, a like, a subscribe. You guys got to follow these guys because they're breaking down the vehicles. But let me let them tell you why this is amazing. Most of you guys are not breaking down the companies, learning about them, and how are the companies getting better? Of course, by creating a more effective and efficient product. But let me shut up and let them talk. Body in white and the evolution thereof. Yeah. And again, like a lot of parts of Tesla, there's a, there's a story, an evolution story. So you can see where they're taking technology and then we can kind of extrapolate where they, they may be going. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's been a journey uh, for them. Uh, I'll start really briefly. Uh, when we look at the 2021 Model Y, when they went from the Model 3 to the Model Y uh, and extended it for you know a more passenger they started getting some mass trouble right away. And so as they put the structure back, they came up with a casting. Instead of having all these stampings and welded all up, instead they came with a casting. And so that was uh, the introduction in, in 2021. And that's the, the rear casting here, that's the rear right? casting there. And what they did when they did that, uh, they were able to get the structure they wanted uh, at a mass reduction, but also they took 70 parts out of the body shop. So sub-assemblies, little pieces that all have to come together and get good. And each up. of which you need uh, dies to stamp them, and then you need all the robots to weld them. Each piece has to be engineered. Each put has to be put on contract. Each piece needs to be tooled. It needs to be built. It needs dunnage. It needs to be shipped. It needs to be received. It, all the costs associated with every part. And so, woo! They're moving fast, but they're breaking it down, guys. Every part matters. Every part needs to be shipped. Every part needs to be tracked. Every part needs to be negotiated. Every part has a volatile price that changes due to macroeconomics. So everything has a process. Now they were able to break down three hundred items, right? By doing what? Mega casting, right? By not having so much parts that they have to wield together. And so they're turning something that was massively complex and they needed so many items to lesser items and creating what? More efficiency, right? Making it more effective and efficient, right? And even just this picture that I'm showing you here, right here to the right of me, it's not good enough. Even the picture to the right is not good enough because even the body of the car is just there. And those are individual components that need to be welded and put it together. This is not a mega cast. I showed you guys a mega cast. We went through the factory before and we saw the process in here on Everyone Hates Tesla. If you haven't known, if you haven't checked it out, then go back and check out the video. But this is what we're talking about, cost saving. How is the company revamped in its process to be better? The best IP of Tesla is its manufacturing. But most people don't know that because they're still just focusing on something else. And so one part's better than 70. <laughs> And, uh, and that's what they did. And so that was really a, a big step forward. Shortly uh, thereafter. In a correction, they reduced 70. Now he's saying shortly thereafter, they did what? Allow him to continue. Let's get it. 2022, we see that not only did they have the rear casting, but this is when they introduced the front casting. And this is just like well. a year apart or a year so, apart. something like that. That is amazing. Yeah. And so now you can see this front casting. Um, before we get too far, John, uh, from a uh, a safety perspective, uh, we ask our uh, associates to wear PPE when we're around uh, uh, the body and white, especially these. So we're going to fast forward. They need to put on the PPE because somebody hurt the hand. As they came forward then with uh, the 2022, we not only saw the rear uh, casting, but now the introduction of the front casting. And if that took 70 parts out of the body shop, this took 360 parts Yow! out of the body shop. Wow. So the body shop's starting to get a little boring. You yeah. know, I mean, just think of the workload that's been. So 360 body parts out of the shop. You've taken. 360 processes, items 
that need to be attended to. Not only just put into the vehicle, guys, but it needs to be ordered. It needs to be tracked. It needs to be inventoried. It needs to be negotiated because, once again, the market changes. The properties and the items from different suppliers are going to change because the market changes. But net, net, we just eliminate the pieces, not because we're cutting back, but because we're doing better designing. We're doing better manufacturing. That's it. We're not deleting them because we're just cutting corners. We're deleting them, creating the safest car out there in the market, in the world, and at the same time, designing for success, designing for efficiency, manufacturing for efficiency. Come on. And taken out the manufacturing floor space, all the associated uh, costs with doing that. And, and you know, just, just as an aside, what I love what you're talking about here, Terry, is they're designing cost out. They're not necessarily beating up their suppliers. They're they're not asking for price cuts. They're not decontenting the vehicle to make it cheaper. They're taking cost out through design. Yeah, I don't know if they're doing any of that other stuff. Probably a little bit all, but the best thing to do is design it out in the first place and integrate your designs. Mm -hmm. No part should just do one single thing. And you have to look, you know, the whole system wide, for instance, as they did this, you'll notice also that the body in white for the 2022 model, white, there is no floor. And it was like, well, you guys forgot a big piece here. <laughs> and, and then you realize, you know, the, yeah, I have this huge piece of metal this way, this long, and this far below it, I have another piece. Why do I have two pieces? Well, that's a body. It comes from the body group. And the body group is your body. It'll have a floor, guaranteed. Always has. And that's a battery. Mm -hmm. 30 kilowatt lives in there. We're not letting them out. So here's a vault. And it's safe and go bolt them together. And I said, well, terrific. You get one. And so now one piece had to do both. So the top of the battery became the floor of the car. The top had to get a little thicker in order to do the double duty, but on net, a 14% improvement. 14% improvement by what? Creating the battery and making the floor. Instead of having the floor plus the battery, because that's how it was, that's how most people just build out the EV cars. They said, wait, hold on, why are we having a floor? Why don't we just use the battery as a floor? Let's delete a piece design it to be more effective and more efficient. And it's quite funny that I find these details to be very interesting because they matter. We will sit around all day and talk about the efficiencies of an iPhone 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. We'll be super happy because they've changed a camera. They changed a home button. There's no longer a keyboard. We were super elated for that when we looked at smartphones. And so when we're manufacturing a car and we're deleting the floor, and then we're having the battery as the floor, and we're deleting 360 pieces, but still having the most safest vehicle out here on the streets, then that's a win for us guys. And that's as fascinating, even more fascinating than a new chip, than a new semiconductor, than a new webcam, or a new front cam and a back cam, and the deletion of this part of the iPhone that we always are super ecstatic about. 14% improvement. We're talking numbers. So driving that cost out by design. Also, as you see with the casting, they're also able to take cost out because it's an enabler for a modular build. This, in, this entire module right here is the HVAC module. So the compressor, the evaporators, the octovalve, all the heat pump, all these pieces, they're right there. And it just comes in and sets right there. And there are four vertical bolts that secure it. And so because it's this front module, you can walk right up here. You can operators can access everything right here, and then to continue to build the modules from the ductwork, the HVAC, uh, right down out to the front and the and the front bumper. It all just assembles. So manufacturing cost designed out, and this we see is this is the precursor to their unboxed mm -hmm. uh, that they announced at a, about a year ago at an investor conference, and you can see the the steps that they're making uh, yeah. toward that. So we saw you know the uh, really uh, a quantum jump in the castings. And of course, the whole auto industry has got their attention and everybody's doing, uh, you know, they're maneuvering to see how to, what's their answer to mm. this. Uh, and the so they're leading the industry, right? Other industry automakers are figuring out how can we get to make a cast? How could we delete this process? Is this guy over here, Tesla and the engineers and the manufacturers and the staff and the employees, they're out here changing the assembly line making monumental changes and in innovation since Henry Ford that none of us have made. And so therefore, you would look for that in anything you guys invest in. If you invest in a property, you want to look for somebody being able to reduce expenses. How are they reducing expenses, right? Because reducing expenses are going to increase your net operating income. It's going to increase your margins and your profit and your return to investors, your ROI. It's going to increase your cash on cash. It's going to create increase your equity multiple. 
it's going to help you out. So this is the same thing that we're doing. We're not moving the job and the manufacturing to China to cut back expenses because labor is higher in America. What are we doing? We're creating a better product, designing it better, cutting out a lot of items and making it more effective and efficient and a better price tag. And there'll be plenty. Yeah. Now, when we turn to the Cybertruck, we see the castings on steroids. This is this is taking this. Now, he said casting on steroids because Cybertruck is the next model and it's a new model and it's the innovation that's going to happen. So each car from the S to the three model three into the Cybertruck, you see innovation, innovation, 60 parts being deleted, 600, 360 being deleted on the next one. And then now to the Cybertruck. In this technology and, and taking it even further, um, as, as you can see here, a front uh, casting, it's larger. Where in this one, the front, uh, there was a crush can here, essentially, to manage low speed type uh, accident. And if you get into this, you just, after two bolts, take this piece out. This, the casting comes all the way to the front. You can see it's essentially corrugated, so it's designed to accordion and, and to crush, these, and crush and appropriately impact. in a safe manner. But um, this comes all about here. Some people raise a concern. Well, low speed damageability requirements in Europe and such. Thing. I don't think you're going to see many of these in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, that that f modular approach, you know, you can get right up to the front of dash in this design. You can, an operator can get right here. You can see this beautiful uh, casting here that comes in. And this, uh, like that, it's actually uh, the entire uh, HVAC module. Oh, again. my gosh. You can see in our iceberg uh, platform the data that, that we take all these things apart and you can see how it all goes together. But it just comes in, same, sets right in here, are four bolts. There are little tabs here that there's a fork here goes over this tab, this moves up, just hits that, it's in place. So kind goes. of pokey yoga, just pokey slam yoga. it in there, it's good to go. It's just right there. Yeah. So this one's a V, that slides in, this comes up, run your bolts, you're, you're done. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Now it's interesting, a couple of things as we observe, because you know, everything isn't, uh, as it might seem, you know, there's these inserts that have- And then let's pause right there, because the guys, I want you to see actually back here, let me see if I can zoom in for a second. Had to be put in. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop. As you can see, this is how it looks. This is how the front engine looks when everything's in. And it's not the engine, but I'm just going to say that so you guys could see the next example I'm about to show you. So you got that as an example. And it doesn't look too complicated and complex. But let me show you how an ICE vehicle looks, right? Excuse me. Let me just pull that up real quick. Give me a second. Uh, so we're going to show you how an actual car looks, a regular car, right? Now, here's what under the hood looks like. Look at this. This looks like nonsense. This looks like mess. This looks like what's going on. Who shot John and forgot to kill him? And so that's why when you guys go to the mechanics, you got the guy at the mechanics with the goddamn, you know, toothpick in his mouth like, now, let me tell you something. All right. Let me tell you something about your engine. The carburetor inducts her with the with the with the spark plug with the infuser is mixed in with the hydrotonic alloy kickback so basically in, in layman term it's going to run you about fifteen thousand dollars to repair see that's what y'all used to you know what i'm saying you got the guy let me tell you something all right i could fix your car that's no problem okay we fix cars out here this is why this place is called fixed cars usa but let me tell you something when i was looking in your car I saw, if you just look right there, you see the red thing right there, and that's the battery. But underneath the battery and connected to the battery is the hydro carbureted connected to the piston rockets on the flare, okay? Now, we got to order one of those places from Japan and then from one of them Chinese fellows down there in the CCP. Now, communist countries have an embargo on Japan and China because of due to stipulations over the China South Sea. So net net what I'm saying, it's going to run you 88K. Yeah, yeah, it's 88K for the part. Get the part back. Once we get the part back, it's going to have to ship. We're going to have to air fly it if you want it by at least a week. Once we air fly it in here, medevac it out of Vietnam, and we bring it back to North Korea because we got to smuggle it through the Sahara Desert. Then we got to do labor, okay? Now, when we get it, it's going to be on Labor Day. So since we got to do labor on Labor Day, that's two L's, two L's, subtract 18 to the seventh power. That's going to run you at least $50,000 in man labor.
and we got women. So now it's 60,000 for women labor. So it's going to be hard to get this done, but I, I can do it. I can do it and I can do it for at least 30 grand. But if you take this to a real shop or a real manufacturer, they're going to at least run you a hundred thousand dollars. You might as well get a new car, throw this one out and go ahead and sell it to me for about $8. So what you want to do, that's how complicated the process is. But we have a more effective and efficient process. It's clean. It's righteous. It's 14% improvement from the accolades and mind, milestones that we achieved previously. Much love and appreciation to people at Tesla and for fasteners, mm -hmm. because this would be pretty easy to strip out. It'd be hard to build the type of torque you need. So you have the inserts that go in there and then this is a hardened steel. So bolts can, can start going in and start making connections. So you'll see those used kind of extensively around. Also, it's, it's interesting that the, the front motor mounts, they're bolted on. Why is that? Why wouldn't that just be part of the casting? Well, they were. On, on the, so the, model y. the Model Y, they were cast right in. Uh -huh. And so you would ask exactly, as you did. well, you, you used to mold them in, how come now? And in fact, not only are they not molded in, but the fasteners have to be driven from both sides. Oh, interesting. Because that's usually not the way Tesla does you it, right? They, they like fasteners, way. especially yeah. going right down yeah. vertically. I, I would think that there was a desire to do this to the front stub frame, mount it there. And then there was a late minute change. I said, no, that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So we need to put it here. And at that point, you're so far down the road. It's like, here's your part. Go bolt this up. Yeah. So got it. That's that's what I was speculating mm -hmm. as I see that here, how that, how that looks. Nescafe. Now, gorgeous coffee and gorgeous car. And if you guys drink coffee and get your coffee. The casting. Uh, made now, see, this is the mega cast right here. That big old machine is special. We are special at Tesla. We 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 got things that other people ain't got. So when you see, I, 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 I'm going to try to pull up the assembly line of the EV of a car from GM. <laughs> that joint is whack. But let's continue. That's the casting machine. Made there's uh, tools top and bottom and then two slides that come out to make this whole piece. You can see the webbing that gives it uh, the all the strength. Here. Right. Yeah. And I'm sure all this is FEA designed, you know, so they know exactly how how wide, how thick, exactly where they go, the curvature, all Can't that stuff. How many iterations they must have gone through, but yeah. that's an engineer's <laughs> dream or nightmare, one of the two. But <laughs> yeah, that, uh, even a lot of modeling goes into this, to, and especially with these castings, because the cooling of the part, once the part's made, it needs to cool. It can't crack. It can't warp. Can't do all kinds of bad things. Got porosity, and so in the design of the tool, all that, it's all done in math. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about this body, body and white, is that <clears throat> none of the A-surface is structural. Interesting. All the none panels just hang on. All the A-surface things are just for pretty. Hmm. That's it. They're just aesthetics. They, they don't offer any, any structure. In fact, they just bolt up. Interesting. And even the rear quarters bolt up just like the, the front fender. Hmm. So is that for, you good. think, repairability or just they got so much structure in here they didn't I need think, structure for the I think it's, it's just, it's part of the unboxing process. Oh, how do I drive the cost yeah, out? How do yeah. I get it so it's faster and uh, less cost? And again, it's, it's, it's all in, it's a system. The fact that you get a glass roof or you don't get a vehicle. You get one, any color you want, one is black. You get one. Well, that means from a body shop perspective, I don't have to schedule these things in. And some have sunroofs, some have power sunroofs, some have glass. Uh -uh. They're all okay. the same. All the same. Boom. And that keeps the cost down uh, in doing that. And see, also people don't understand that. They understand that a customization complicates the process. So people are like me, you can't customize. They should have a version with a trim like this and another version with a trim like that. That creates more problems, more issues, more room for error, more parts, better parts. The best part is no part. So therefore, deleting parts help. But when you have customization that that is it's that detailed or that specific, then it creates a catalog, an inventory. Then some people are buying this one, but not buying the other ones. And then you got to like have a proper you know, a reorder, a restock, you know, time frame for some that are ordered more than other parts. And you have to decipher that and update it. And it's just ridiculous when you're talking about, you know, producing millions of cars. And again, these pieces then this all come and bolt on the side. You can see that we have a hot press, uh, hot stamped 
pieces that come together. You can see where the Taylor welded blanks come. And so you can see some witnesses where those come together, mm -hmm. where they're welded together. And Taylor welded, of course, is you put high strength steel exactly where you want it, exactly high impact, you, you know, uh, shoulder harness mount strength. And, but why spend the exactly. money for that high strength steel exactly. in places where you don't need it? It's a matrix. It's a where I need it where I need it. I don't need it where I don't need it. And I find that magic combination. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look right here on the rocker, there's, there's these little patches here. You mm -hmm. see here, 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 and here. Well, those are lining up. Remember when we looked at the battery and we saw the structure on the bottom of the battery that went across right. car? Right. That's right where those end. Oh. So as this rocker comes into that, you know, it, 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 was, it was probably too hard. So this is a softer steel. It digs in. It says, okay, just, just try to push this now instead of sliding off. And you can see just the application of those. To your point earlier, if we look at the where the shoulder belt or the seat belt, shoulder belt mm -hmm. attached, okay, we have steel. This is this can take the shoulder belt loads. It's a big load. So we have aluminum piece. Oh, we're going to use steel just right where we need it. Right. And probably high strength steel. Yep. So they just had to switch it up. High strength steel for the requirement of the seat belts and et cetera. We're going to fast forward because we don't want you guys sleeping out here. All right. Because, you know, some people actually want to dive into the details and know stuff like this. But I want to show you on this channel that so you guys can see it firsthand so you can understand why when people want to invest in Tesla or even just how good Tesla is and the hate is just ridiculous in comparison to what they're actually doing pertaining to the operations, you can understand where I'm coming from. It has nothing to do with Elon and Twitter. It has everything to do with his actual manufacturing, his assembly, his vertical integration, and Tesla as a whole, as a company that continues to innovate, create, and change the paradigm. Like, the job that you work at, there should be an SOP, a standard operational procedure. And it should explain, even in the absence of a seasonal manager or someone that's a mid-level employee, in the absence of somebody to teach you the information, you should be able to open up that book, open up that pamphlet, open up whatever document it is, the SOP, and understand what to do. It should tell you how to operate the business or how to do said job from A to Z. Right. And that never is recreated. Nobody dives into the SOP and starts to say, why are we doing this? Why don't we delete this process and this step? Once you start doing that and a lot of companies, you become an issue. They're like, waste mine. Why don't you just come to work and do your job and stop trying to change the game? You're not Elon Musk. You're not Henry Ford. Just come in here and do your job. And so. You create problems, massive amounts of engineers from even these guys to Sandy, Mon Sandy Monroe constantly give you guys information from the perspective of being engineers for decades about how it's so hard to get industry and mega corporations to change anything. And there's so many things on the line. I don't blame those industries, but net net, the innovation is not easy to make. So let's continue. You know, the strength of back here, the, the header is aluminum. So by the time you're back here, life's good. Yeah. You can go with aluminum. You can see the, the castings in the flash. Remember I talked about getting a industrial lacerations. I mean, this, these things yeah. are really incredibly sharp. You yeah. stamped in this little sort of Easter egg of the that, that structural adhesive. Yeah, structural adhesive. Put it together. Yeah. And I, I love how they yeah. stamped in this little sort of Easter egg of the Cybertruck and this was some sort of hammer? I, I, I'm not sure what that is. I'm, I'm calling it Thor's hammer. But uh, yeah, we were surprised to pull this. I said, hey, look at here. Here's a Cybertruck silhouette. You know, because stamped in here. most owners will never see that. <laughs> I'll bet most people don't even know that. That You know, designers love putting Easter eggs inside a car that an owner can discover over time exactly. in their vehicle, right? Exactly. I think Jeep star, Jeep designers were the yeah. ones who really started that. But to put an Easter egg on the inner fender, <laughs> <laughs> never heard of Incredible. that before. Right. When you look at the side uh, of the Cybertruck, of course, you see this huge eyebrow that goes from the windshield all the way back. Uh, it is one piece. But the way they do it, it's, it's sort of like what you saw there. There is an inner piece you know, giving a structure. The mm -hmm. stainless is the uh, aesthetics. Mm -hmm. And then it's simply, uh, again, an adhesive that mm -hmm. holds it together. And then they just have clips. It's just so like it just clips right clip, 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 clip. Yeah. So smart. No it, fasteners. It, it is. I mean, I mean it's, it's a fastener, but I mean, not threaded or anything. Right. You don't need a wrench to do it. Right. Now, you do need to learn because I came up one day and walked up as our uh, associates were taking it off. And there is a bend right here. I said, wow. How did it get bent? Oh, there's a fastener. I didn't know it was right there. And we pull you. But if you look, 
you kind of break its back right here structurally. Oh, uh -huh. and so right where you know that flange is. Uh, if you kind of gun sight this, you'll see that they right. take a little bit. So so notice to all service it, you better notice you know, to know all what text. you're doing. Right. Yeah, yeah, everybody. Really good. Yep. So that's a a quick flyby of the of the body structure. Um, we'll, we'll be doing more work, we're doing a metallurgical analysis, and mm -hmm. you know, what kind of material exactly, what alloys, what grades are they using, and yeah. in various places. But again, taking the the castings to to a whole new level here. That's great, Terry. Brilliant. Thanks so much. This you're, is fantastic you're, you're insight welcome. to welcome. how Tesla does it. Yeah. Enjoyed it. Thanks, John. How do they do it? How do they become so amazing? Shout outs to Terry. Thank you for the information. I think it's sorely needed for the public to quite get a better understanding. Let's see what the normies are talking about in their conversation. Let's see if they understand what's going on. And I could listen to Walter White talk about Tesla all day. And this is pure delight to listen. So well informed, articulated and engaging. That hammer was from the original reveal demonstration of how tough the doors were. And what a great partnership, AutoLine, and they're talking about, you know, the YouTube channel. And Guy is very good at explaining things. Love how he takes his time to clearly understand everything he is talking about. Makes it very easy to sit and learn. I agree. And it's cool hearing how many parts got deleted by using the gigacasting. I appreciated hearing the list of processes all these parts go through. And there is one more point on this. Tesla makes a giga casting themselves versus all these parts in the old frame structure would have been built by suppliers. That affects cost, quality control, and the ability to change the design as you go and etc. That was a great comment and it made sense. Seeing the comments about this frame being more expensive to repair, you don't repair frames. Any insurance company totals the car if your frame has been compromised, exactly, you know, because that kind of messed with, you know, kind of the structure of the car. And Tesla is the best car company ever. No glass, no gas stations, no oil changes, no smog checks, no corrupt dealership or stealership. <laughs> and as fast as a 650K Lamborghini, a Lamborghini. Okay, interesting. And so given San, yeah, Sandy Monroe a run for his money, that's another gentleman that's online that breaks down these cars and cars in general. Uh, they do consulting services for car manufacturers and probably also other people. I've seen Sandy Monroe in many warehouses and factories uh, attempting to use his expertise to help other people to figure out the mass production and how to scale and figuring out problems that they're dealing with. And in three, at you know, the point of three minutes, you showed a crush can, and that looks like it's easily made separately from the front gigacast. Built in the part of the gigacast, but designed, it is is so uh, when it crushes, you cut it off from the rest of the GC, the, the car basically, and then you have a new part that sleeves in, in the trim. You eliminate this part of the crush can, but you don't need to sacrifice the whole GC in a minor crash. Okay, understood. But crashes aren't the majority of the vehicles that will be created. It's a small few, so there you go. But net net, eh, I'm going to leave that to the experts to break that down. Tesla, uh, Tesla finally gets serious about bumpers in the front and the rear, as it appears to be in the case of Cybertruck next as well. Handbrake would be greatly appreciated as well. And all of this takes time, guys. You know, building out a new company to make these kind of changes. I mean, it's just new. It's unheard of, and this is what we're doing. But the evolution of the body, the evolution of the body of the Tesla, the manufacturing, there's no slacking. There's no jacking because there's nobody at the tippy top that got the spot on lock like Tesla. Who else can do it better? Who's more clever? Who gets it together? Cuts down costs. The rest are lost in the barbecue sauce. I don't understand how y'all think they are in charge. Now, you might think Elon is gone, but oh, Lord, give it another examination before you come up with a determination. I mean, this is the greatest company in the nation of the USA today. They don't play. Why wait when you can sit back and be great? By investing in Tesla, nor this is the investment advice. But this is the fight of your life for clean, renewable, sustainable energy and for the revolution of electric. It's electric 
Boogie woogie woogie. You can't conceive it. It's electric. Boogie woogie woogie. And you know it's just me. Uh, how in the head anywhere? Yeah, I know that song. It's electric. Boogie woogie woogie. But the best company is Tesla. Tesla all day. And shout outs to the greatest country, the USA. Everyone hates Tesla and another one for the USA. USA, 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 US